So yeah, thanks for having me. Um, and as was mentioned, I'm going to be talking today about um, the new One CGIR initiative that I'm leading that has, was just launched uh, about a month ago on fruits and vegetables for sustainable, healthy diets. And this initiative is one of 33 initiatives under the, the One CGIR, which are envisioned to be nine to 10 year research initiatives. And this was designed by several partner organizations, both within the CGIR, which uh, has organizations like the International Food Policy Research Institute, where I work, uh, CIMIT, uh, the Alliance for Biodiversity, and CIOT, uh, the uh, CIP, which is around international, the International Potato Center, Africa Rise, and the International Water Management Institute, along with several others. Um, we also collaborated for designing this initiative with external partners from the CGIR, which included the World Vegetable Center, Applied Horticultural Research based in Australia, Wageningen University, the University of California, Davis, University of Sydney in Australia, and the Institute of Development Studies in the UK. The main challenges that this initiative is designed to address are revolve around the primary challenge of the intake of fruits and vegetables, which is far too low globally, infecting nearly every country in the world. And this is contributing to poor quality diets and in turn high prevalence of malnutrition and diet related non-communicable diseases. The key barriers that have been identified to increasing intake of fruits and vegetables include low availability. We know that the gap between supply and demand for vegetables is very large, and this is in part due to post-harvest losses, which can be nearly half of, of what is produced. There's also issues related to accessibility, where we know that safe, diverse fruits and vegetables are often not easily accessible to everyone, and especially if this especially affects marginalized populations. Affordability is also a challenge we know that costs of safe, diverse fruits and vegetables are very high and often much higher than staple foods or highly processed foods that may not be as good for uh, nutrition and health. However, we also know that even when fruits and vegetables are available, accessible and affordable, many people decide not to eat those and choose other types of foods to eat. And these choices about what people eat are very complex and are often driven by considerations other than costs and health, such as convenience, time, image, palatability, and culture. To date, research in these areas is sparse and fragmented. And so the FRESH initiative is aiming to address all of the barriers that were just identified, but also looking to consolidate research in these areas to have a more concerted effort to addressing all the various issues that are contributing to low intake of fruits and vegetables worldwide. Fresh is using an innovative, holistic, end-to-end -end approach where we are aiming to start with consumers and looking at issues related to assessing first what it, are the dietary intake patterns for fruits and vegetables? What are the gaps in fruit and vegetable intake that are related to nutrient gaps and potentially um, allowing space for more unhealthy foods, high sugar, high fat foods? Working with them to identify within each of our focus countries, what are the primary barriers to increasing fruit and vegetable intake? At the same time, we'll be working closely with farmers and other value chain actors to understand constraints to increasing supply of affordable, safe, and sustainable produce. Throughout this end-to-end -end approach, we'll be working with partners along the value chain and with government um, partners and multilateral organizations, civil society organizations, to co-design and evaluate innovations along the value chain, as well as policies to address barriers throughout the value chain to support fruit and vegetable rich diets and to replicate and scale successful approaches. Our primary aim is to improve diets and ultimately nutrition and health, but we also aim to simultaneously reduce poverty, empower women and youth, make vegetable production systems more resilient, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions and draw down carbon. Across the supply chain, we have different areas of focus. Within the supply side activities, we have three areas of focus. 
and here we are we are aiming to increase the availability and decrease the cost of the vegetables specifically. Our primary target groups for these activities are farmers and other value chain actors, especially women and youth. The challenges that we aim to address within the supply side revolve around three main components. The first around biodiversity, breeding, and seed systems. And here over the next three years, we're looking to work with 10,000 farmers, about half of which we hope will be women, to adopt improved climate resilient vegetable cultivars that align with consumer, farmer, and other value chain actor preferences. And this we expect to impact reduced poverty, improve livelihoods, and have some effects on climate adaptation, mitigation, environmental health, and biodiversity, and have a focus on improving gender equality, especially. Another set of challenges is around production and production diversity and sustainable production. Here we aim to reach 10,000 farmers, again, half of which uh, we aim to have as women um, to adopt safe and sustainable vegetable production practices. And here we expect the same range of impacts. The last area that we will address on the supply side re it revolves around post-harvest processing and food safety. Here we aim to work with the private sector and different partners within the private sector to co-design and pilot innovations to reduce post-harvest losses and to improve food safety. Next, we will work directly within the food environment. And here our focus is on increasing the accessibility and affordability of fruits and vegetables. And our primary target groups will be to work with marginalized groups. The challenges that we aim to address within the food environment revolve around affordability, inequity, food promotion, where we have you know, highly processed foods and unhealthy foods being heavily promoted and finding ways to, to promote and, and um, encourage intake of uh, fruits and vegetables. Retail, where you know, product placement and other issues around the retail environment would come into play. Food provision, which is related to institutional or school meal quality, where food is provided through government supported programs and to see if there are ways to influence uh, the provision of food, foods to in, include fruits and vegetables. And also working on the policy environment, specifically working with laws and regulations related to uh, food retail, food provision, et cetera. Um, and the main outcome for the next few years for this set of activities is to work with key actors across our focal countries, uh, to work with them to have them actively engaged with us in designing and testing interventions to increase accessibility and affordability. And here we aim to have impact on nutrition, health, and food security, again, on reducing poverty and improving livelihoods, and a specific focus on equity across gender, youth, and social inclusion dimensions. Lastly, we work with um, consumers, and here we're focusing on increasing the desirability and affordability of fruits and vegetables. Here, our primary target groups are young children, adolescents, and women, and they've been chosen because they either are known to influence what is brought into the house and eaten amongst the household members, as well as having more malleable you know, preferences. So young children, adolescents are, people that you would want to influence their, their intake because we know that you know habits that are developed when you are young can influence what you eat over the, the course of your life. There's also some evidence to suggest that what women eat while they are pregnant influences the preferences of their, their babies and those can last throughout their lifetime. And adolescents also are at a decision-making point in their lives where they're starting to have more agency as to what they eat. And so working with them directly um, at that time when they're starting to make their own choices could be another key time to influence uh, habits and behaviors and food preferences. So the challenges that we're working with on the demand side relate to affordability, poor quality diets, preferences, things like convenience and time, household decision making. Again, you know, what is the influence of different household members on deciding what actually is available at the household level and what is served at uh, family meals or in other situations. And again, working across the policy environment, which we aim to do across all of the areas of our uh, research initiative. 
The primary outcome over the next three years for this set of activities is again to work with stakeholders within each of our focus countries and to actively engage with them in designing and testing interventions to increase fruit and vegetable intake directly. So this set of activities we envision will have the most direct impact on increasing fruit and vegetable intake and impacts on related nutrition and health outcomes. Um, we will likely be using some social protection type approaches, uh, such as vouchers for fresh fruits and vegetables and other um, types of social protection programs, which may have effects on poverty. And also we'll be working directly with um, women and youth and so working on issues related to gender equality, youth and social inclusion as well. For the first three year period of this research initiative, we have four focus countries, two in Asia and two in Africa. In Asia, we have Sri Lanka and the Philippines and in Africa, we have Benin and Tanzania. At the national level within these countries, we also aim to work with uh, the national level actors to increase the prioritization of fruits and vegetables and institute national level policies, laws or regulations aimed at increasing fruit and vegetable intake, production, food safety and equity. And that we also are aiming to create a fruit and vegetable knowledge hub, which we hope will reach 10,000 users in the first three years to have them use this as a resource for learning about fruits and vegetables, research and innovations. Just to give you an idea of how we envision the fresh end to end approach working within a single country, you are using Tanzania as an example. Here we will have two production hubs to start, which will be located in the north of the country. Those production hubs will have um, value chains that, that then work, and they can be either short or long value chains, which would then reach different food environments in different areas of the country. And so we will work directly with those uh, food environments to see how changes in production and changes directly within the food environment are affecting what is available and the cost of different fruits and vegetables. And then we'll also look at catchment areas around those uh, food environments and also directly at the producer household level to see if we can also work with the consumers to directly change their preferences and habits and to take advantage of changes in the production uh, value chains and food environment to take all of these activities together to increase the intake of fruits and vegetables. Um, and just in general, I just want to thank everybody who has contributed to making this initiative possible, including our donors and our donor group, our technical advisory group, all of the different colleagues that have worked on creating this initiative, um, our communications team, which at IFPRI, which helped to develop the slides that I presented today, including our graphics design team and other uh, members of our initiative. For more information, you can uh, look at these uh, links um, that are displayed here. So thank you very much.